welcome back. I'm here with Steve Hodges, who's a principal researcher at Microsoft Research and also is the co-chair of the summit, and also Yoshihiro uh, Kawahara, who is an associate professor at the University of Tokyo. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So I understand um, that you have a technology to make electronic circuits quickly and easily. Can you tell us more about it, please? Yes, um, we have a special uh, silver nanoparticle ink, which allows uh, anybody to make a circuit by as a pen or uh, with a print inkjet printer, regular inkjet printer. So if you load the ink to the pen, you can draw a circuit on the paper and uh, you get a uh, uh, functioning electric, uh, electric circuit right away. Or if you load the same ink to the printer, you get uh, this kind of beautiful circuit uh, with a digital mm -hmm. fabrication process. So, thank you, that sounds very exciting. So this ink and this paper, is this something that's on the market today? Can we buy that off the shelf? Yes, uh, this pen and uh, special ink inkjet cartridges for regular inkjet printers are available at uh, agic.cc uh, and uh, amazon.com as well. So I think, I think this, st this stuff is really exciting because if you, you know, if you look at this, it's important to realize what, what we're looking at here is uh, this is pure silver that's been printed with um, a regular inkjet printer. So the kind of printer you can buy, you know, on the order of $100 from Amazon. Uh, so this really means that this technology of printed circuits is much more available to uh, makers and hobbyists as well as professionals who want to prototype circuits much more quickly than was possible previously. You know, if you use a traditional circuit board pr uh, fabrication process it takes many days and is quite expensive and with this for just a couple of dollars and literally a few minutes you can have a, a working a fully functional single-sided circuit well it sounds there are really some some benefits to this technology can you elaborate a little bit more on some key scenarios where this is a benefit this marker can be used for educational purposes uh, young children can learn how you make uh, how to make an uh, electric circuit by try and error and uh, also it is used for, for um, professional use. For example, this sample has been printed using a large format uh, poster printer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so designers can uh, make very beautiful uh, wallpaper uh, using this technology. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Yoshi. So I understand that education is an interesting scenario for this. Uh, are there other interesting scenarios that you could tell us about? Yes, of course. Um, for example, if you can print this kind of pattern uh, actually, you can make a sensor, various sensors at very low cost. For example, this is one of the typical example of making an agricultural soil moisture sensor and leaf wetness sensor, which is, gives uh, useful information for reducing water consumption of the growing crops. And uh, actually, the manufacturing cost of this printed sensor is one-tenth of the conventional sensor. This is one of the uh, great successful example of the low-cost production of sensors. Yes, so the, the, the cost factor really seems to be an important one here. Steve? So we have another uh, a little example here we put together. So this is a circuit which we actually designed in uh, PowerPoint, if you can believe it. Um, and uh, so you print it out. I've got four copies of this circuit here. Print it out, cut it out, and then if you fold up the circuit, if you fold up the circuit you get, um, you can push it into, uh, this is some uh, pr um, printed 3D printed uh, plastic I created, and I put a little coin cell and an LED in here, and you've actually made a, a functional torch using the the printed circuit as the conductor, which makes the circuit, and including the switch. So, so this is kind of quite cute, but it's still quite limited in its functionality. We've made an electric circuit, but not an electronic circuit. Uh, it's just an on-off switch, really. Uh, so, so we got to thinking about how do we make more sophisticated electronics? How do we combine traditional electronics with this kind of very accessible printing technology? And for this, we came up with a, a concept we call circuit stickers. So uh, circuit stickers uh, is an example of one here. And, and basically, we use a very thin um, electronic circuit board made with a more conventional process. And we put uh, components on the they're soldered down on the top of this board. But on the underside, uh, we put these pads, these conductive pads. And these are designed to interface with a circuit you've printed. So the idea is you, you design a particular circuit, and you lay it out such that when you place these stickers down on the circuit, things get connected up in the right way. So I've got an example here. Um, of a little uh, uh, circuit which has got a couple of LED lights, a motion sensor, and a little processor, as well as a battery. And if I switch it on, you'll see it's configured to uh, make the LEDs blink, the lights flash, when it detects motion. And, and of course, the interconnect was made using, um, using this conductive inkjet process, which gives us a very flexible, as well as a very easy uh, to produce, quick, easy, cheap to produce solution. 
So, and how do you have these circuit stickers? Do they stick to the to the material themselves? Well, that's really interesting. So, when we make the uh, the circuit stickers using our, our conventional uh, process, they're not adhesive at all. Uh, but it turns out there's a um, that 3M uh, make a particular type of double-sided tape, which is very magical. Uh, so, it conducts electricity, but only through the thickness of the tape, not across the surface of the tape. So, what we do is we put this um, 3M double-sided tape on the underside of the uh, of the uh, of the circuit sticker and it doesn't short circuit any of those contact points but it means that when you then stick it down onto your printed circuit it makes the required electrical connection so it's very easy then to do prototyping with this kind of technology well it sounds like even a kid could do it potentially but what about the software that are using to design the circuit and to design your electronic device is that easy to use or is it as straightforward as the, the hardware well, at the moment, this is, uh, this is still uh, a research project, um, and we've been using some very accessible tools uh, to design our circuits. I mentioned PowerPoint, and we use Visio, for example. Uh, but one of the things, one of the research challenges is to put more smarts into these tools so that they not only understand the properties of the circuits you're connecting up, um, like traditional electronic CAD packages do, but at some point, you're going to have to start programming functionality into the microcontrollers, for example, that you use in these circuits. And so uh, you can imagine a much more integrated uh, programming or environment or development environment which which takes all these uh, into account mm -hmm. okay so steve and yoshi looking at the at the exhibits here i can see the circuit stickers i can see the printer that you're using but there are also some other exhibits so for example this this large poster that you have here what what is that exactly yeah um, this is an example to show the Actually, this printing process is scalable. You can both print a small one and large items. Mm -hmm. So this is on this poster, the beautiful patterns are printed, but uh, these lines are functional, uh, functioning as a, uh, electric wires. If I place a small surface mounting LED here, it starts to eliminate, as I show you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That that's, that looks great fun. Thank you very much, Yoshi. So thank you very much, Steve and Yoshi, for this exciting demonstration. We will now take a break from the demo floor and uh, show you a video clip on how we envision to use eye gaze technology to enable mobility and communication for people living with disabilities.